Clam prop. Hey guys, it's Spence from Video Spence. In my last lesson, I gave you a sneak peek that we're going to talk about how to make a nice music video. One of the basic foundations for that is how to make a cut in the video based upon the beat of the underlying music track. Today, let's talk about how you can start to do that and think about what music might work for your kinds of, uh, let's say, music videos for flying or flying music videos. I'm going to use the same project file that I did before because that way those of you who've already gone to trikepilot.com and downloaded the file for free can use the same source material. If you prefer to use your own music, follow the last lesson and go grab yourself some kind of royalty-free track from YouTube or just use something that's your favorite music at home. Remember, when you're publishing music to the internet, you have to be sure that you're clear on what your rights are. Some of the music you can use for free with unlimited rights, other things you have to be a little cautious about if it's copyrighted material. Either way, when you're practicing for fun, it's all good. I'm also using the same clip that I had before, which is a good example so that there's continuity between the two lessons. Now, I'm here in the timeline editor and I have basically the video file on the video one track and the audio on the audio one track. And all I wanna do here is zoom in enough so that I can see, I don't know, maybe where the video is. But better than that is I really wanna see where the audio waveforms are. Now what I'm gonna teach you requires you to sort of listen in and the sound on this might be pretty good but it's coming through my audio as well of my uh, computer speakers. So the gist is we're going to start listening first for the beats the places where the music stops and starts naturally. Those are terrific points for you to do your edits. Now, we'll have to adjust later based upon what footage we have, but if you think of it in terms of, let's say, a revolving door system, one of those carnival games, what happens is as that thing rotates around, there's an opening, and that's when you can kind of throw the ball through or walk through or whatever you want to say. And in the same way, the music has a starting and stopping beat pattern, right? Da -na -na -na, da -da -da. Uh, goes to the next verse or maybe goes to the chorus. Those are places that we want to mark and specifically trim the music so that we can do the same for the video. Let me show you an example of that. In this particular case, we can use the trimmer tool that's the razor blade that's our old friend, the slice tool. I call it the trimmer tool. Or we can use the shortcut. In this case, the shortcut on the keyboard is going to be quite handy. In order to use the shortcut, all we need to do to remind ourselves is right click on the audio track, and let me do it up here. Right click on the audio track, and we can see that the shortcut command on a Macintosh is Shift, that's the up arrow, then Command and D. In PC, that would be Shift, Control D. So we hold the Shift key and Control, and then press D. And that's how we're gonna do the trimming without having to move our mouse at the exact spot. And this is why. As we go along and we press the play bar, the actual trimmer marker or the timeline marker, the scrubber marker, it's all the same word, is going to move over to the point. We're just gonna press the play bar to stop the music and then hit the trimmer shortcut command to slice it in order to get a mark there where we're gonna later use it to trim our video. Let me show you. Right there. So I'm going to do Shift Command D. And it doesn't matter here if I'm trimming both, but in the case of the video, I'm actually not going to need the video to be trimmed. So if I wanted to, I could just get rid of the video file for now because I'm going to add the video back later to match up with the trim points. I really want to make sure that I'm trimming the audio. So be sure that you've got the audio highlighted when you're doing these trims. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. Right there, same thing. Da -da -da. Da -da. Right there. Now, arguably, you might have to go back and check that section again because I think there was actually probably a trim right in the middle. But again, you don't have to necessarily do this one time. You can go back and check it and you can adjust 
Part of the fun of doing music video stuff is it's very personal and stylized. There's no rules here. So let me go back actually and see if I missed something. Right there. Okay. Now, this is just a few cuts. You'll notice that when I hit a spot, it lets me know because it snaps to it. And so that's kind of what I'm going to use in the future for my video. In fact, if I wanted to, I can use the pointer tool and you see how each segment is identified. I want to let you know that there are some different types of editors that in the future may, you may decide to use. Final Cut Pro, I happen to use one called ScreenFlow. Many of those, uh, Adobe Premiere, many of those actually have what are called markers where instead of doing the slicing on the audio, you can simply let the soundtrack play and hit the marker add button. You know, in some cases it's command M or it's the tilde. And what happens is then a little marker gets added to the top of the timeline. HipFilm doesn't have that, but for most of these things, you don't really need it. It's such a basic kind of a concept. Now that I've got a couple edits, let's say, for example, we'll drop in our video clips. I'm not going to use clips. I'll just use the one clip that I have just to prove a point. So here when I drop it in, notice it's trying to give the audio. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop it in, and then I'm going to right click and I'm going to unlink, as I've done before, the audio track. And then I'm going to click on the audio track, which is really just the background propeller noise, and delete it. Now I can drag the, uh, let's drag the main video file closer so we can see where we're at. And let's pretend for this video that the clip itself is a series of other videos. In other words, that I've got different shots, just like I did before, where I had inverted the one shot, maybe shown a different angle, maybe I have a front camera, a back camera, and so forth. All I want to do is make sure that the transition points for those particular video uh, cuts happens at the same point where the music changes. So I just kind of go back and find the places where the audio was sliced, and I repeat the process, but this time I'm going to apply my cuts onto the actual video file. And again, this doesn't have to be exact because we can always drag it around a little bit. So I could just kind of either drag the marker around and slice it or do a repeat of what I just did before, which is drag the marker, uh, get as close as I can, and then I can just hit the same slice command. Whichever way you do it, it's really a preference. I find that after a while of practice, I prefer not to use the mouse too much. I actually remain almost exclusively on the actual keyboard. And then I use those tools that I hinted at before, JKL, which allows me to quickly scrub. You see how I'm doing this? I'm very able, quickly able to scrub back and forth a little bit. And then I can use the left and right arrows to adjust even closer, whichever way you prefer. And then finally, the last one is here. And that's really it. What we've got now is, let's say, an audio track that we've identified where the beats are, the transitions are in the music. We've taken that and we've laid in, let's say, our video clips. In this case, I'm using just one. And we've made it so that the transitions all happen at that point. Now, at this stage, we can go in and fine tune. So again, let's pretend by mixing these up that we're using different clips from a uh, different place. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to colorize the individual clips to make them have the feeling of being unique. So what I'll do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to make this one really dark and I'll make this alternative one really dark and I'm just lowering the opacity here and the reason is so that way we'll see the difference in transition and this is where we can do our trick from before where we can either uh, scrub in or zoom in with the mouse or we can zoom in just using the little timeline uh, zoom tool. And what we're going to do is apply transitions. And we can apply this, in this case, to the video. We don't want to apply it to the audio because the music soundtrack should just be continuous. So here, for example, we can go to transitions video like we've done before. And we can do something like a dissolve or a wipe or a zoom or anything we want. Let's say we did a clock wipe. We just drag it to the overlaying intersection between the first clip and the second clip. And then if we want, we can drag the transition make it a little bigger, a little smaller, and so forth. And then we can see how it looks. Okay, you see how that worked out? We're just doing a simple clock wipe just to demonstrate that what's happening is that transition of the clock wipe is happening right over the intersection where the music changes its beat. 
Okay, and let's continue and do that for the rest of the clips. The rest of the simulated clips, if you will. I'll use uh, maybe I'll use a push on the next one, and I'll use a slide. We can have fun with these. You can experiment, and I'll do a split screen or something on the last one. Okay, let's take a look at what our finished product looks like. Okay, there you have it. Now these are really basic steps, of course, and I kind of rushed you through this because I'm using just one clip. But just put yourself in the position of once you've gone through the earlier steps of our training here and learned how to, let's say, get your basic clip set up, find the ending points that are good, get the good spot, you'll have a library inside of your media library here of clips that you can use. And then you'll just individually lay those on top of your favorite song where the intersections or the transition points are right over where the music transitions. And in so doing, you're gonna be able to end up with a very nice product. Now, in the end, I can also finish this off by doing a starting and ending transition, just like I showed you in the last video. Just take the audio transition from over here, and at the beginning, you can do a fade, where it fades in from nothing, and at the end, you can do a fade where it fades out to nothing. Many of your songs already will have that, though, especially if they're commercially made music. I hope this lesson helps you to be creative and get inspired to make something fun, especially over the holiday season when you have some extra time and there's snow on the ground for yourself, your friends, your family, and the rest of your pilot pals. I look forward to seeing you on the next lesson. Clamp prop!